will present my PhD work which the aim, with the aim to join to the United Scientific effort to reduce the impact of COVID-19. I'm working in the Heimpal National Pediatric Institute, where at the COVID outpatient clinic, I have weekly experience with the children affected by the infection. My mission is, uh, my mission is to acquire a deeper understanding of research methods, hence increasing my knowledge in pediatric care. An overview of my project lists here. There are three perspectives that we consider remarkably important. Firstly, we investigate uh, the prevalence of asymptomatic infections for understanding viral transmission patterns. Secondly, we analyze the accessible data on TNF-alpha inhibitor therapy as a therapeutic option in severe COVID-19. And lastly, we could have a deeper understanding of COVID-19 by conducting an analysis of our prospective cohort. Let's see the details. So our work involves conducting a meta-analysis uh, to explore the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different pediatric age groups. Children are likely to have a higher proportion of asymptomatic infection than adults, and asymptomatic patients can easily pass through fever screenings and other targeted testing programs. They spread the virus in a completely hidden way. Um, uh, therefore, the accurate knowledge of the asymptomatic population could help improve preventive measures and avoid diagnostic delays, for example, in long COVID cases. We included studies that uh, conducted an analysis on PCR-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection, and we hi our hypothesis was that the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 is higher in school age, 6 to children than in other pediatric age groups. The systematic search was conducted in three databases and we included 153 articles to the final analysis. During the data extraction, we realized that there were many different PCR screening strategies during the pandemic, such as drive through testing, inpatient uh, testing, newborn screening or contact tracing. Therefore, we created seven groups in addition to the general, general population based on the different PCR screening strategies. This table shows the ratio of asymptomatic COVID-19 for each screening strategy and age group. We included, we included the highest number of participants in the general population group. And let me lead your attention to the age group with newborns from infected mothers. 69% of them were asymptomatic in the analysis which is an outstanding result. If we examine the general population, the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in children is 46%. This means almost half of the infected kids are asymptomatic. If we examine the different age groups, the higher prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in school age children is striking, it is 65%. And the risk ratio age dependency plot provided by the dose response analysis also shows that the risk ratio increases over time until a plateau between 6 and 10 years of age and then decreases. And so was evident in all three of our analysis. All three, the prevalence analysis, the risk ratio comparison, the risk ratio comparison analysis, and the dose response analysis produce the same consistent result with the highest proportion of asymptomatic children in the 6-10 year old age group. The general population was also analyzed by Healthcare Access and Quality Index, where a higher score indicates a more advanced and safer healthcare. As expected, our findings indicate no significant difference between countries with varying healthcare qualities, as the confidence intervals are highly overlapping. In summary, we highlight that half of all SARS-CoV-2 infected kids are asymptomatic, with the highest prevalence in the 6-10 year old age group. It's important to note, in the case of diversified symptoms and complaints, the history of asymptomatic COVID-19 should be considered. We can highlight the importance of vaccination, and uh, there is a need for further investigations of predisposing factors, of, of course. Our manuscript has been submitted to JAMA Pediatri Pediatrics 
And Gemma asked us to repeat the search uh, and include the most recent studies in the analysis. So we are working on that currently. And um, let's talk about my second project. Uh, we are investigating the effectiveness and safety of TNF-alpha inhibitors as a therapeutic option in severe COVID-19. Because studies found associations between the rising level of TNF-alpha and severe COVID-19 cases. Hence, TNF-alpha blocking uh, could be a favorable intervention on modifying the inflammation. We included studies that analyzed the population with SARS-CoV-2 disease, and we accepted a population as a control group that only had standard of care without any administration of TNF-alpha inhibitors. Currently, there are only a limited number of randomized controlled trials, but several studies are still underway. Uh, therefore, we are, dis we, uh, we are developing a prospective meta-analysis uh, meta protocol that will incorporate the existing findings and will be expanded with new data from ongoing projects. So we are wor uh, working on the updated selection process and we are close to finalizing that. And at last but not least, characterization of COVID-19 in Hungarian children, analysis of 511 prospectively collected patients' data. The impact of COVID-19 has varied across countries. There are regional, uh, regional variations due to the differences in population, protective measures, uh, virus variants, etc. We perform a descriptive analysis on, uh, on, confirmed SARS uh, on patients, children with confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection, who were hospitalized in a tertiary care national hospital between April 2020 and April 2021, and followed up for two years. <laughs> we included 511 patients in the cohort with an almost equal distribution of boys and girls. You can see the distribution of hospital admissions on the left side of the screen. Um, with the, with the highest numbers um, with admission in the end of 2020 and in March 2021, which aligns with daily case number reports. Most of the children was admitted with a mild course of illness in the age group of under 1 and 7 to 14. And upon admission, a variety of symptoms were observed, the most common of these were fever, cough, and fatigue. As I mentioned, there are more than 500 included patients with data from every inpatient day, and we are collected biological samples during the follow-up as well. A few words about my additional activities. As you have seen, I'm involved in the prospective COVID-19 registry of Center for Translational Medicine. This is a multi-center registry with five locations in Hungary. Uh, last year, I had the privilege uh, to attend um, at the UNIVEL summer school with a specific focus on COVID-19. And this year, I had the honor to present our data of asymptomatic COVID-19 uh, at the annual meeting of European Society for Pediatric Infectious Diseases. In summary, our three perspectives that, that can contribute to the knowledge of COVID-19. Thank you for your attention. Um, yes, um, we, we um, created a subgroup analysis on, on countries as well. Uh, it could be a confounder factor. Um, and um, we would like, in, in the updated analysis, we also would like to uh, create analysis on virus variants and, and uh, vaccinations as well.
Yes, hopefully uh, uh, there are some research administration to include to uh, input the data to the uh, platform, and um, it is a big strength of our uh, cohort. I think that every patient um, um, is examined by a doctor. So on every follow up, we uh, get uh, biological samples and examine the patients. Um, yes, we had we had the biological ba biologic bank, and um, um, we examine the blood samples for for uh, informations we we need. So it's under discussion, which which uh, yes. Yes, it's it's a difficult question. Um, there are different theories about about that. Um, it is hypothesized that uh, children um, with with um, regular vaccinations and and um, frequent viral transmissions um, um, the they can it can maintain the activity of the innate immune system for example and cause milder infections but uh, i can tell you a satisfactory answer for that it's a good implication for research Um, yes, in, in the registry, um, we included patients from April 2020 to April 2021, and we followed up the, uh, them. So the, they are all uh, infected with the original Wuhan virus and um, alpha uh, uh, variant. Um, so in, in that case, we know which variant is, in, is affected by them. But um, it's really important to update the search and, and um, uh, create new um, research on, on new variants, of course. Uh, at this time, uh, at this time, uh, it's it's on the biobank as well. We we work on a project that look for rare genetic variants from the blood at this time. Of course. Of course, on the follow-up, uh, we have a really detailed questionnaire with every symptoms, and and uh, uh, we we uh, create a PCR on every follow-up as well. So we check that uh, they get COVID again or not. We also um, investigate the sero serological parameters, so we we know if a patient get COVID again. Yes. No, it's it's not possible. Yes, um, 
Thank you for the question. Healthcare Care Assessment Quality Index is uh, measured on a scale from 0 to 100 based on death rates from causes of death that could be avoided with, with effective care. If I remember correctly, there are 32 factors uh, considered in a quite complicated calculation in, in the Yes, thank you. Um, it's a really important question. Um, uh, in that meta-analysis, we include patients um, until June 2021. So all patients, all children are unvaccinated children because vaccination for children started after this. And um, all children uh, um, uh, infected with uh, the original Wuhan and Alpha uh, viruses but in the updated analysis, we definitely would like to create subgroups for every variant and uh, vaccination statuses as well.